Hello, my name is Emma Rasman and I am a master's student in CPES. Today I will be presenting on the series connection of silicon carbide MOSFET modules using active DVD-T control. This project is sponsored by General Electric Global Research Center and the U.S. Department of Energy. There are a wide range of applications for medium voltage high power converters such as motor drive systems. The typical design goals for these converters include cost, efficiency, and density. By stacking devices in series, converters can achieve even higher blocking voltages. Two-level switching topologies are of interest due to less complex circuitry, higher density, and simpler control techniques when compared to conventional multi-level converter topologies, which typically require additional flying capacitor or isolated voltage sources. The challenge of stacking devices in series is the naturally unbalanced voltage between devices. This can be caused by several factors, such as gate signal timing delays, tolerances and device parameters, and layout parasitics. If devices are significantly mismatched in voltage, this can lead to an overvoltage for a given device, since the total bus voltage will be greater than the individual device's rating. Therefore, it is important to monitor the voltage across a series connected stack. Voltage balancing for the series connection of switches has been widely studied for silicon IGBTs and more recently has been studied for silicon carbide MOSFETs. Passive snubbers are desirable in industry due to their simple implementation but require large passes and draw significant losses through the snubber circuit. Active voltage clamping is another method for voltage balancing that is less lossy than a snubber but can require additional high voltage power supplies to clamp each device in a stack to the desired voltage. Finally, active gate control was the selected approach in this work. Although it is complex, active DVD-T control is preferred due to its low loss and small footprint. Active DVD-T control was originally proposed for gallium nitride by CPES. As shown in this slide, a current source circuit is used to adjust the DVD-T at turnoff. By injecting current at the gate, the device can be slowed down in order to adjust the DVD-T. This method can be extended for series connected devices. We expect that there will be an imbalance between the devices and their voltage due to a mismatch in speeds, which is caused by layout parasitics and device parasitics. By controlling the device speed, we can compensate the parasitics and match the device speeds. This method is sufficient in its balancing without increasing the turnoff loss. The proposed solution is a voltage controlled current source. Q1 and Q2 share the induced current ICM, where ICM is induced by the switching node voltage at the drain due to the capacitor CM. Q3 and Q4 form a current mirror where Q4 copies the conducted current of Q3. Q5 is antiparallel to Q2 to discharge CM during the off time and charge during the on time. Q5 acts as a diode. When V control is zero or at its minimum, all of the current goes through Q2 and consequently to the gate. This leads to the slowest speed for the MOSFET. When V control is at its maximum, all of the current is split between Q1 and Q2 and consequently split between Q3 and Q4. This leads to the fastest speed for the top MOSFET. This circuit is low loss, is negligible in change in the device switching loss, leads to voltage balancing within 10% and is expandable to more devices in series. Here is shown the closed loop control on the active gate driver. First, VDS is sensed. It is scaled down for the gate driver ICs. Next, VDS is sampled and held at the appropriate time, making sure that the turnoff transition is complete. A PI controller chip is used to calculate the error between an expected reference and the sense VDS. The output is the magnitude of the V control signal. A single pole double throw switch is used to pulse the V control signal during the off time only. This is to avoid conduction losses during the turn on. Finally, the active gate DVDT controller is used with the given V control signal. 
depending on the magnitude of V control, some current is injected at each gate during the turnoff transition. Here is the test setup of the proposed method. This is a half bridge configuration where the proposed voltage balancing scheme is validated by a multiple pulse test. At the input side, a Magna 3.3 kV voltage supply is used to charge the DC link capacitor bus. In the freewheeling loop, a clamped inductive load has a series resistor in order to limit the drain current from, for multiple pulse testing. Series connected MOSFETs in the freewheeling loop are clamped off in order to treat each MOSFET as a diode in the freewheeling loop. For the device under test, non-commercial 1.7 kV 550 amp silicon carbide MOSFET devices are connected in series. All devices have static resistors across them for voltage balancing and steady state. Finally, the active gate drivers are used for all devices in the stack under test, besides the bottom device, which is treated as a slack to take the remaining bus voltage. Shown here is the test bed with a half bridge configuration under a clamped inductive load. Here is the midpoint of the half bridge. Here is the 1 millihenry clamped inductive load, and here is the series connected load resistor. At the top, these are eight series connected silicon carbide MOSFETs that are clamped off in order to create eight stacked diodes. For the device under test, here are the bottom eight devices connected in series with active gate drive control. Here is the active gate driver with DVDT control. This is a two story, six layer PCB. The top story is the power stage, and the bottom story is the active gate driver with control. Each gate driver PCB is designed for half bridge silicon carbide power modules, which have two devices per module. The design on the left and the right are the same, but are isolated from each other. Here is the current booster with the base of gate drive circuitry connected to the gate. Here is the DVDT control network that's connected to the gate. And finally, here is the closed loop circuitry for determining the appropriate control signal for the DVD-T controller. Shown here is the voltage sharing between four series connected silicon carbide MOSFETs without any control under an 800 volt DC bus at 20 kHz switching frequency. Devices 1, 2, 3, and 4 are connected in series where 1 in green is the bottom of the bus, 2 is in purple, 3 is in blue, and four at the midpoint of the bus is in yellow. This result exemplifies how the mismatch in voltage between devices is difficult to predict due to differences in device parameter tolerances and layout parasitics. Next, shown here, is the open loop tuned voltage between four series connected silicon carbide MOSFETs under an 800 volt DC bus. This test shows the ability of the DVD-T control scheme to match the turnoff speeds between devices. Finally, shown here is closed loop control voltage balancing between four series connected silicon carbide MOSFETs under a 2000 volt DC bus. Devices one through four correspond to channels one through four respectively, where channel one is in yellow, channel two is in blue, channel three is in pink, and channel four is in green. Channel one or device one is at the bottom of the bus, and channel four or device four is at the midpoint of the bus. The startup transient is due to the lack of an initial condition for the PI controller. Within two milliseconds, the four stack devices are all matched in voltage within 10%. This waveform shows that stacked silicon carbide MOSFETs can be balanced by active DVD-T control. Thank you for watching and hope to see you at the CPES conference.